Hello there. Well, here we are with great little trains. There's one of them. In which we take a gentle look back in time at the long lost days of steam railways. Well, not so long lost, actually, if, you, if you'll follow me. Incidentally, when I asked them for a mode of transport commensurate with my stature and talent, and this is what they came up with. <laughs> Hi ho, silver. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like to be on the footplate of a great steam locomotive? I have, when I was at school, dark nights under the bedclothes, imagining that I was shoveling half a ton of nutty slack into the hungry firebox of the Torbay Express as it roared westward. Oh, memories. So here we are, in the land of the Great Western Railway, South Devon. Bookfrisley, as it's known more properly locally, uh, on the old South Devon Railway. Bookfrisley to Totnes by way of Staverton. And they say it's one of the most attractive steam railways in the West Country. So now you know. Ah, good day to you. One Pullman ticket to Totnes, please. Hang the expense has always been my motto, particularly if you're not paying. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This used to be called the Buckfastley and Totnes and South Devon Railway, proving the point that the longer the name, the shorter the railway line. Still, this is jolly good value. For this, you get 25 minutes of glorious Devon countryside. The man who put the great into Great Western Railway was its great-great-grandfather, well, his great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. You can't have too many greats, but Isambard Kingdom Brunel, the great engineer, he built the Great Western Railway. He built Paddington Station, he built the Tamar Bridge, you name it, he built it. He was the great engineer. And he wrote in 1840, it seemed to me that the whole machine was too small for the work to be done. And that it required the parts to be on a scale more commensurate with the mass and velocity to be attained. How about that? The mass and velocity to be attained. That's a railwayman's speech. Ah, yes. What do they say? Nostalgia's not what it's cracked up to be. Well, they haven't travelled on the Buckfastly Totnes and South Devon Railway besides the River Dart, watching the salmon leaping upstream. It must be the romantic in me. Is it the engine shrouded in steam, hissing and puffing impatiently? Is it the way the cows and sheep look arrogantly up as we thunder through their field? Is it the gentle, meandering nature of these lines? I tell you what, certainly not the coffee. Yeah, listen to this. At the reopening ceremony of the Dark Valley Railway in 1969, the guest speaker was one Lord Beeching. Do you remember him? A name akin to Hannibal Lecter's in the years of most railway lovers throughout the land. He apparently said that had he not closed the line in 1959, then he could not have reopened it. Boom, boom. That's what I call comedy timing. And sturdy. Look at that. What more glorious sight could there be to a young, impressionable lad of 13? I'm forced to confess that the young Rushton fell in love for the first time, looking over a parapet at the 832 from Euston to Lime Street. Automation is an alien science in these parts. Forget your Silicon Valley, this is the Dark Valley. Down here in South Devon, someone gets his hands dirty. The local vicar, in this case. Morning, Rev. Ah, 
Ah, Staverton. It said they do rather a fine old chocolate machine here. Stomach rumbles. Ah, luckily I have the necessary old penny. One D. It's got to be past its sell by date. Yes, look at that. 1910. Ooh. Hello. Oh, moustache. Got to meet two rather important people on the train. Hello, Shakespeare. The Dark Valley, nestling as it does in the foothills of Dartmoor, it's got to be a steam utopia, the railway buff's version of the Stretford Inn, I suppose. The line was designed by Brunel in 1848 at an estimated cost of around 100,000 quid. Not bad for giving nearly 150 years of pleasure to millions of railway lovers throughout the world. Value for money in any man's language. You can't beat it. The river dark rolling by, a nice comfortable seat, and the company of lunatics, quite frankly. And here we have Mr. Richard Elliott, who, um, he, he has it all, really. I mean, he has, certainly has his own railway. This man actually gave up being assistant bank manager of a high street bank for this. Clearly mad. And with him, Mr. Bill Wright, the commercial manager of the South Devon Railway, who I understand lives in a railwayman's hut when he comes to live down here. Quite clearly, uh, we're in trouble here. Um, is it true to say, gentlemen, that you are actually both eight carriages short of a train, quite frankly? <laughs> I don't have to give up a well, good life like for this. this. We don't think so, do we, Bill? My friends may think so when I leave to go and play trains from Watford. They they're very suspicious. It's another world, they say. <laughs> How long have you actually been doing this, uh, associated with the line? 30 years now. Yeah. I came here first in 1965 to uh, help out on the uh, track work that we were doing at the time to try and get the line resurrected. And I've done all sorts of things since then. I've uh, been signalman, guard, ticket inspector. Um, never actually been a driver or a fireman on, on the line, but uh, never mind. Um, and you were at the bank all this time, were you? I mean, yes, sir, yeah. so I was working, working for a bank. And then what uh, happened? When did you become a, high, a big cheese? In 1991. I handed in my notice to the bank one day and uh, came down here as general manager. Is that roughly your story? Are you giving it all away? Oh, well, I first met the railway in probably 1935 in my little short white socks coming up on a charabang trip from Torquay. And it's just been woven into my life ever since. I, I couldn't escape. It reached out for me. This next question may be slightly embarrassing. You are allowed to lie. It may involve trouble at the bank. But um, does, this, does this line actually pay for itself? Um, only with the help of volunteers. We've got a very strong volunteer association, and uh, we have about 250 people helping with the operation of the line in one way or the other. And uh, we've only got seven full-time staff. If it weren't for the volunteer side, no, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't pay its way. But as it is, we make we make a small surplus every year, um, thirty-five thousand in 1994, and we plough it all back into the uh, infrastructure of the railway and the restoration of all the uh, carriages and engines. So that's basically why, Bill, uh, why, why you can do it, and British Rail can't really. It's the volunteer force. It's the unpaid labour. I've advertised you as being the most attractive um, railway in the, in the West Country. Uh, what, what else do you have? It's time for a free plug. What else do you have to offer the customers? Well, we like to think we're heading towards a museum on wheels. Uh, you're sitting in a 1932 coach used to carry passengers to and from Plymouth, from the ocean liners docking there. Uh, and it was the Great Western's answer to Pullman coaches. So you're sitting in history. You can be married in here, I gather. Oh, I think so, yes. Or, or, or yes, we certainly parties. celebrate wedding, weddings yeah. in, with parties in here. The new, la the new laws, maybe we can actually marry you. Talking of history on wheels, I'm wondering if I might make a little. Is there any possible chance that I could get onto the footplate? I mean, this will make an old man very happy. Certainly will, if you. Only too delighted. I'd like to come down to the engine with me. We'll uh, bail you on board. A lifetime's ambition realised. Oh, look at those cows. They're beautiful. <laughs> This is terrific. This is all my dreams come true. This is much, much better than anything that ever happened under the bedclothes. What he's doing now is stoking the Dutchman. 
Don't take these in my eyes, man. I just got you. This is terrific. Can I, can I pull the whistle? Yes, okay. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, uh, uh, God knows what he's doing to the Dutchman now. <laughs> <laughs>